Hello, everyone. This is a lesson on alkene, alkyne, and cyclic hydrocarbons. Now, if you're watching this right now, you have already watched the alkane hydrocarbon or been in class for that. So let's start. Okay. So an alkene is a hydrocarbon with at least one double bond that connects two carbons. So a couple of examples are here. Now this sentence over here, it's, it refers to uh, weaker pi bonds. And although um, that does certainly play a huge role in how alkenes react, uh, we will get more into the pi bond and what that means in our next unit. So don't worry too much about that. I'm gonna switch to a pen. Okay, so ethene, we know it's the prefix, the root word is F for the two carbons we have. Now in its alkene version it would be ethane, but it is no longer ethane. It's because it's an alkene, it ends with E N E. And we have two carbons connected by a double bond. Now this carbon this hydrocarbon is one, two, three carbons long, but it's not propane because it's not saturated anymore. We have a double bond here, so we change the ending to ene. So propene. Okay, now alkynes, alkynes have at least one triple bond, right? So here we see that there are triple bonds. Um, these, uh, again, refer to, at this part, he refers to pi bonds. Again, we'll get to that later on in, in our next unit, right? But the naming is similar in that you keep the root F for the two carbons, prop for the three, and in this case, four carbons for but but the ending changes from ane, your saturated alkane, to ine. So it's not ene either, it's not ene, right? It's not ene because it is an alkene. It has a triple bond, so it's an alkyne. So we are, suffix is going to be Y, N, E, right? As we see here. And we'll get more into the into examples involving nomenclature in just a moment. Okay, now again, we're going to review just generally what these are. We've thought we talked about alkenes, alkynes, and now cyclic hydrocarbons. So cyclic hydrocarbons we've actually already been introduced to in our previous lesson on alkanes, but those were saturated ones. Um, aromatic compounds are ones that are um, are unsaturated. Okay, a common one is benzene. You have a picture here. Um, you can redraw this to see that there is a carbon here, carbon here, carbon here, so on. So it's six carbons with alternating um, double bonds. And that is known as benzene. So this this structure here, um, if there are no branches attached to it, um, if this isn't itself a branch, it's simply called benzene. And mind, these should be subscripted here. The sixes should be subscripted there. Okay, so unsaturated cyclic hydrocarbons are known as aromatic compounds. We've already reviewed what cyclic hydrocarbons generally are in the previous lesson. Okay, so nomenclature. Um, so as, as stated previously, I'm not gonna read over all of these. I might point out which ones are key to look for, but it's better to see all these rules in action in context as we do examples. So again, just to review though, I will, like I said, review some of them, not, not, not usually all. Um, alkanes, saturated and with ane, double bonds will have an ene, and suffix for um, alkynes will end in y and e. Okay, and we'll get to all of these as we do these examples. But first, these are a couple of alkyl groups that we'll need to know. So this is called a phenyl group. So just like we had our ethyl, right? Just like we had ethyl, uh, we had well, before that smaller one carbon, we had methyl, right? Here are other alkyl substituents, except here it's a bit more complicated or it's just a larger group. I shouldn't say more complicated, it's just a larger group. So this is benzene. If benzene is a branch, it's called phenyl. This little squiggly line here refers to where the parent would be attached to. Okay, so if it's benzene as a branch or as a substituent, it's called a phenyl group. And if it's, now this looks very similar, but be careful. This is benzene as a branch, but it has an extra carbon right here. So mind that, that's often a common mistake. Then you have your parent attached to that carbon. Right, so both very similar, except this is called phenyl and this is called benzyl. And some examples. So always begin on the side. <clears throat> that will give you the, poss the lowest possible number. These numbers, again, are called locants from our previous units, or rather not unit uh, lesson. So here we have a parent chain. It is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six, 
seven, eight. Eight carbons long means it's going to end with ain, so octane. This carbon is is an alkane, it's fully saturated. This carbon backbone is fully saturated, so it's going to be octane. Then off of the second carbon, we have a an alkyl substituent. This is um, it looks like benzene as a branch, which is not called benzyl, it's called phenyl. So see if I can, no, I need a, to change my pen here to a cursor or to a select, right? So here we have octane. It is an alkane after all. And on this octane, we have our phenyl group. So we write phenyl octane, but we have to remember to write or to, to state where this phenyl is located. Is, is it on the first, the fourth carbon? Where exactly is it? So we have to write the locant. So we write two. It's found in the second carbon. Now, if we, if we numbered it in the opposite direction uh, with one beginning here, then you'd see on, on where the eight is, then you would see that it would give you a larger locant number, or larger number. Instead of it being two, it would be a seven. And we want to stick with the lowest possible number. So we say two phenyl octane. Okay, next, let me switch pens now. Back to blue. Okay, so another rule that's written in our, in our rules that we're going to follow here, I didn't read over, but I'm going to mention it now, is that you're going to choose, the parent always has to have um, the unsaturated bond. Okay, so this can't, for example, this part here cannot be the parent. Beginning at this carbon up to here, that can't be the parent. For a couple of reasons, it's a very short parent compared to this, but also this has, more importantly though, this has that unsaturated bond and that should be part of the parent. So let's start numbering. And I'm going to number in two different colors in two different directions. You can tell me which one is the correct one. You can think about which one should be the correct one. So that's carbon one, two here, three here, four, five. Now we have an option here. We go five, six up there, or we could go five, six, seven. Let's choose the longest one so long as it contains that unsaturated double bond. So that means we're going to go in this direction, six, and our seventh carbon is right there. So we know the backbone, the parent chain is going to be heptane, right? Not septane, but heptane. And off of the second carbon, we have our double bond. Off of our fifth carbon, we have a group. This is benzyl, right? It has that extra carbon right here. So this is actually benzyl. So let's slowly reveal this name and we can go over the parts of the name, what they refer to. So it's going to be heptane, except that changes, right? It's not saturated because it has that double bond. We have to say ene. Now, where is that double bond located? We have to specify where it's located. And look, it's found on the second carbon. So we say two heptene. So we've taken care of the parent now. We've said uh, that it is heptene, is that it is an alkene, and that the alkene, that double bond, is found on the second carbon. So we write two heptene. Now, the branches come, I'm going to say after that, but that, that would come, almost imply that it's written at the end. It's not. Uh, the branches are named after, and they're, they're written just before the two. So think of this part here as your the two heptene as the parent last name. Now the branches that are attached to that would be part of the first name. So off of the fifth carbon we have, oops, selected, that changed. Okay, so off of the fifth carbon, huh. see if I can fix that. Okay, so off of the fifth carbon, right, that's why we have locant, oops, let's fix this again. Okay, I'll just go through it now. So off of the, off of the fifth carbon, we have a benzyl group. Notice the difference between this benzyl and this phenyl, there's that extra carbon. Okay, um, next. So, so a few more rules, rule number nine, um, we're going to go over now. So here we have an alkyl halide. An alkyl halide is a hydrocarbon that has a halogen attached attached to it. So here we have bromine. And the way you name this is you use the root of the halogen name. So in this example, uh, we have bromine. It's going to be bromo. It usually ends with an O. So bromo. Now, because there are two of them, whenever you see multiples of anything, any kind of substituent, you're going to use those Greek prefixes. It's going to be di, tri, tetra, and so on. So I usually begin with a parent, showing you what the parent is, but now I'm going to show you what 
the branches and what the substituent is it looks like. So we say one, two, because we have to say where they are. And because they're the same thing, we need to add that prefix di because there's two of them. And the alkyl portion, the alkyl substituent is called bromo, not bromine, but bromo. And remember, numbers are separated by commas, whereas numbers and letters are separated by hyphens. So we have one, two, dibromo, and the parent chain is one, two, three carbons long. And notice it is it is saturated. It's a bit harder to tell with this kind of a, a, a diagram, uh, but in this case, it is saturated, and so we write propane. You can double check that by writing out the, by drawing out the molecule. You might as well leave it un under that. Okay, next. More examples. So let's name this. <clears throat> um, here we have. Okay, here we have a carbon, a hydrocarbon. It, we know that it's an alkene. Um, we're going to want to start here, on this carbon, not here. Um, definitely not here. But we're going to start here because we want to give that alkene the lowest possible locant number, and I believe that is a rule. Here we go. Rule number eight: the carbon atom atoms must be numbered in such a way as to ensure the double triple bond is given the lowest possible carbon number. So if you see a double bond or a triple bond, it's actually simpler because it tells you where you should start numbering. So carbon one, two, three, four, five. Let's verify that that's the longest chain. One, two, three, four. All right, so going left to right, that is, and this has to be carbon number one. So if this is carbon number one, off of our second, third carbon, we have a methyl group, which gives us um, well, let's, let's figure out the parent. One, two, three, four, five. It's not pentane because it isn't saturated. It's pentene off of the first carbon. And then we have off of one, two, third carbon, we have a methyl group. So here is the answer. Now, it can be written in two different ways. Um, we can write three methyl. I guess the best way is the first one, three methyl, one pentene, right? Writing the locant for the pentene for that, where that double bond is. Um, if it's not written, then the one is implied. So this is also correct, um, but you can only take out the locant if it's found in the first carbon because the one is implied if it's not there. So both of these are correct. I say though this is the if you, if you want to if you want you can say that this is the most correct one, but really both are both are are fine. Okay, next we have one. Okay, this is a common uh, mistake or not well, not a mistake, but a common. Um, error or mis yeah, mistake uh, in that you think that this is a carbon here and that's another carbon when it's not. This just shows you that this portion here is attached to this bond or is connected to this other carbon through this bond. So here we have one, I'll switch to a pen, one, two, three, four carbons. Okay, off the second carbon we have a double bond. So it's not going to be butane, it's going to be butene. We're on the second carbon, we have that double bond. Now, if you number from the other end, beginning here, one, two, three, four, you still have that double bond appearing on the second carbon. So in this case, no matter what side you choose to begin numbering, they're both going to be correct, and it will give you the same answer. Two butene. At the bottom here, I had a timer, I forgot to say. Uh, Pause if you'd like moving forward. Pause just before we go over the answers to these questions. Pause so you can give it a try. Although some of these are, are brand new examples you haven't done before, it doesn't hurt. It actually helps to think about how you would name this despite not having uh, or having limited experience with it. Okay, so there you go. That is, these are the names for those two structures. Okay, so next and different kind of example here. <clears throat> here we have, we're naming alkenes still here's an alkene so in this case if the multiple bond is the same distance from both ends here's a rule begin numbering at the end near the first branch so this might seem like an extra rule like an additional rule but it really isn't the same rule applies stick with the numbering system that gives you the lowest possible numbers locant numbers okay so here we have six carbons it's going to be if it were saturated it's not but if it were it would be hexane off the third carbon we have a double bond so we're going to say three hexene separated by a hyphen. Let's try to move that aside. So three hexene. So that's the parent. Off the second carbon, we have a methyl branch. So we say two methyl, three hexene. And that's your answer. Okay, moving on. A few more examples. So this type of example has 
we're going to name a multiple unsaturated branched carbon, um, branch hydrocarbon. So here we have multiple unsaturated with a branch. All right. Something going on here where you're going to choose the parent. But for the first time, you're going to choose a parent that is not the longest parent. So look, we could have a parent that, well, a few options for parent chains. We could one carbon one, carbon two. So this could be carbon, oh, let's switch to a pen. <clears throat> I'm going to switch to a red pen. So what it would be incorrectly numbered as. So one, this could be two, this could be three, this could be four. Okay, now this numbering system is incorrect because we need to include the double bonds. Okay, well, let's start numbering from here now. Uh, choose a different color. Okay, we could say one, two, three, four, five. All right, that's longer, so that's better. It's a longer chain, but it doesn't include this double bond. The whole bond, both carbons have to be included, so that won't work. The numbering system, the correct numbering system is here. One, two, three, four. Here on the first carbon, you have a double bond. On the third carbon, you have another double bond. Remember, when there's multiples of the same thing, you have to use the Greek prefixes, the di, tri, tetra, and so on. Um, something else going on, on the second carbon, we have an alkyl substituent, two carbons here, making it, well, let's change our colors so we don't confuse things with what's correct and incorrect. Uh, blue. <clears throat> okay, so this substituent would normally be well, is, is ethyl, and that's attached to the second carbon, right? Um, and then we have a butene, but always write the prefixes for any multiples of anything. So let's see what our answer will become. So di, the prefixes also go before uh, whatever it's referring to. So diene, because there's two enes, there's two double bonds, you write diene. Off of the parent, that is but. Okay, so butadiene, and that is then located on the first and the third carbon, so that is your parent, 1,3-butadiene, right? Di referring the two of the double bonds found on the first and third carbon. Remember, numbers are separated by commas, numbers and letters are separated by hyphens. Now, we continue that by, by naming your numbering off the second carbon, we have an ethyl. So here we go, the full name is 2-ethyl-1,3-butadiene. Okay, another type of example. Here we have a longer parent chain, but we have multiple different unsaturated bonds. So here we have a triple bond here, another triple bond there, a double and a double here. Off the first carbon and off the third carbon, we have triple bonds and off of the sixth carbon and off of the seventh carbon, we have a double bond off of a parent that is 10 carbons long. So a uh, few things to say, <clears throat> we're gonna prioritize a triple bond. So the parent is going, the parent last name is going to end with, or the suffix of the parent is gonna end with ein, Y-N-E, right? And because there are two of them, we write di, Right, and it's we're now going to break apart the parent to include the locants. We only break apart the parent in examples like this that have multiple different unsaturated bonds. So diene, all both found off of the first and third carbon. Right. <clears throat> then we have our double bonds. So all the priority groups change the last name of the parent. In this case, the higher priority group is the triple bond. And you'll see as we continue looking at more of these examples and get into other types of substituent groups, a priority list will start to develop. We'll get to those examples and what that looks like later. So the double bonds off the sixth and seventh carbon appear there. So six, seven, diene, six, seven, diene, one, three, diene. Off of the parents, Oops, hold, held that too long. Maybe I switched. Okay, off the parent, deca. So the full name is deca 67 diene 13 diene Maybe a bit of a tongue twister. <clears throat> okay, take a minute, see if you can do this one yourself, right? And I've actually put a timer here to remind me to do that if you were in class. Um, before giving you the answer, I'll just point a few things out. Um, these two diagrams are the same thing, except this one just gives you a bit of a hint. The parent is what's numbered here blue. It's one, two, three, four. 
numbered and colored in blue, and the branches, the substituents are in red. Okay, so pause the video, take a second, try to figure that yourself, and we'll talk about the answer in just a bit. Okay, well, hopefully you pause that video or this portion, and we can now talk about the answer. So this is a four carbon uh, parent chain. We're off the first carbon, we have a triple bond. So it's going to end with ine, right? Four carbons means but, so butyne. Then we also have two bonds, not two bonds, I'm sorry, two substituents. We have two alkyl substituents. One is a cyclic four carbon cyclobutane, which is now called cyclobutyl, right? Because we know that alkyl substituents end with YL. And we have a one carbon um, branch here, alkyl branch, which is methyl. You write them alphabetically, not necessarily by their number. And we get this. So one cyclobutyl, three methyl because the third carbon we have a methyl group then we write one butyne now in this case because a double bond is found sorry that triple bond is found on the first carbon you don't actually have to write the one but it's correct if you do it's actually more correct if that's if that's a thing uh it's better if you do write that one but if you don't it's just implied that it's on the first carbon but that is then the name okay Good. Um, now we're going to name this. This is a this is a cyclic. Normally it would be called a cyclic hexane, but in this first example here, we have one uh, point where it's unsaturated. We have a double bond, so we can say um, cyclohexene. And you don't have to write one cyclohexene because it's implied that it exists off the first carbon. Um, our other example, though, similar to this, except now we have two double bonds. So we have uh, our first one that exists off the first carbon, then off the third carbon, we have another. So take a second, pause the video, see if you can come up with the name. Okay, so hopefully you've come up with this name. 1,3-cyclohexadiene. One and the three are where the double bonds occur. The parent is a cyclic compound, so we write cyclohexa. Di because there's more than one, so you have to write di, and then ene because it's referring to those double bonds. And that's it. Your homework is posted online. Um, it's a great worksheet to go over. Post any questions. I hope this helped.